Hi, welcome to day six of healing from iliotibial band pain and pain syndrome. We're going to talk specifically today about iliotibial band syndrome. So iliotibial band syndrome is identified by the pain is in very specifically in the outer knee. And so what you'll hear is that, oh, it's a ligament issue or it's a tendon issue and it's going to take a really long time to heal or you may always have problems with that. I disagree with this idea um, that it's going to take forever or you may never heal. From my perspective, the way iliotibial band pain syndrome happens at that outer knee is that very often it's one of two things. One is that it could be just trigger points in that vastus lateralis. So if you look back in the mini ebook that I sent, that anatomy PDF with the pain referral patterns, you'll see vastus lateralis refers to the outer knee. And yes, long distance running is gonna jack up your quads. Vastus lateralis is a quad. Yes, it can create that pain in the outer knee. If you release those trigger points, I've seen many people release those trigger points and get immediately out of pain and then do the kind of longer practices of hamstrings and quads together for a little bit of time and then fix that pain even though they've been diagnosed as iliotibial band pain syndrome. The thing is, sometimes iliot that, that syndrome is a bursitis and bursitis is when there, there's a little um, bubble of fluid deep to the bottom of the iliotibial band, and that keeps your band from rubbing on the condyles of the femur. So here's the thing. Sometimes the bursa goes, oh, there's a little too much pull in this iliotibial band. It's too tight. So I need to fluff up to create more space underneath that tendon so that it doesn't rub and fray. Well, yes, good idea, but, but <laughs> the way it works actually is often just from standing with your weight over to one side or more habitually pulling that ITB taut by position. And that puts pressure on the bursa and makes it swell. So let's talk about that for a moment. I'm going to stand up. And that iliotibial band goes down across the knee. So if I am putting my weight all on that side, I'm going to be pushing that femur, right? We've talked about this already, about when we push that femur out of the socket, it makes glute min and glute medius contract to try to push the femur in the socket, right? Remember that? But what else happens is that femur can also be pushing on the iliotibial band itself. Now we know the iliotibial band itself doesn't really stretch, but it's gonna feel pulled. And there are sensory receptors in that band that are going, oh, that's too much pull because it doesn't really stretch, but it can be pressed taut against the bone. And in this scenario, what we need to do is work on our posture and release the inner thighs and the outer hips. My experience is that more often than not, that true syndrome or bursitis at the bottom of the iliotibial band is a positional issue. So what you're gonna wanna do is release the inner thighs and the outer hips. It can also be from just trigger points in that vastus lateralis muscle. So what are you gonna do? Hamstrings and quads release. Release the vastus lateralis. So either of those situations can cause that pain in the outer knee after a long run, after a long ride, whatever it is but it may not be true um, tendonitis. Or, and frankly, tendonitis is caused by tension in muscles. It's just how that works also. So I want you to understand that that syndrome does not necessarily mean that you need surgery or whatever. Do these practices that you're learning in this course. So I want to speak specifically to that technical syndrome because a lot of folks are, in my, under, in my experience, 
misdiagnosed as having that syndrome or bursitis. Bursitis is going to be swollen. It's going to be hot. There's going to be some swell, you know, some inflammation in there. You're still going to do these things that you're learning in this course, and that's going to fix it for you. So I hope that's helpful in understanding information. Keep doing the practices you're learning in this course. It's going to fix that syndrome at the bottom of the iliotibial band at the outer knee and also any pain along the iliotibial band. This movement break is specifically designed to build strength in the outer hips, the gluteus minimus and medius, and help you counter the pull of the inner thighs. So having that chair nearby and just doing some slow standing leg lifts. Now try this. If this is the hip that kind of gives out that you have your iliotibial band pain on, it might be a little weak. So as you go to lift this left leg or this side, standing strong on that inside leg and start lifting the leg from here, from the low back. First thing is to lift the hip, then lift the leg. Hip stays lifted and just lift that leg four or five times. That's three. There's four. And that's five. Hold it. Uh, and then switch sides. Press down with that inside leg. First step is to lift this hip and just go five, four, keep the hip lifting here, three, two, one, and hold. And then lower it down. Side abduction, side leg lifts to build strength in those outer hips. For this rolling practice, we are going to use the soft ball and the small ball to release gluteus maximus and TFL because those are the two muscles that attach into the front and the back of the iliotibial band. So I'm going to show you that real quick. Here I have worn these pants with this little stripe on them because this stripe follows basically the path of the iliotibial band. Comes up to the top rim of the pelvis, down over the greater trochan or the femur, and down along the outer thigh to the tibia just below the knee. So we have our little TFL muscle attaching to the front of the iliotibial band, and then we have glute max coming in and attaching to the back of the iliotibial band. So that kind of push-pull on the iliotibial band, um, releasing these muscles can really help to alleviate some of the symptoms of iliotibial band pain syndrome, which might be happening really low along that, uh, the bottom of the ITB. And of course, starting with that little bit of rolling in the inner thighs is gonna really help. So we're gonna use the soft ball first in the glute max. I'm gonna show you real specifically where glute max holds its tension. So I want you to become really aware, sitting down on the floor, legs stretched out in front of you, I want you to become really aware of where the sitting bones are. So glute max holds its tension, now it covers this whole buttocks, but it holds its tension right there at the sitting bone and at the um, sacrum. So we're gonna use the soft ball. Please just use the soft ball. Feel the sitting bone, especially on that right side. We're gonna take that soft ball, put it right under the sitting bone. So you're literally sitting on the ball. You must have a soft ball to do this. You can't sit on this on the sit with a sitting bone on a firm ball. You're gonna bend both knees, place the feet on the floor, and then circle around the sitting bone. And as you're doing this, what you'll discover is that there's some tenderness around there, but there's especially some tenderness toward the top and the inside of the sitting bone. <laughs> top and inside of the sitting bone. So circling around, notice, uh, feels a little tender in there. You might have two spots so start like just above the sitting bone. Now you can see that ball is just above my sitting bone and I'm gonna kind of rock up and down from the sitting bone, up, down, up, down. And 
See if you can just kind of find the right above, just as you're about touching the sitting bone, you'll feel that tenderness. So I want you to sink in there, pause, take a deep breath. Now you can continue in that way, just taking a deep breath, or you can start to actually kind of activate that glute. Stretch and push, stretch and release, stretch and release. And that made my point just really shift. Now I'm gonna shift my hips to the right so I go toward the inside of that sitting bone. And there's an awfully tender spot, just kind of wag a little bit get in toward the inside of that sitting bone. Ah, uh, tender, mm-hmm. Right between the bottom of the sacrum at the coccyx and the sitting bone in that area, very tender spot. Just taking a nice deep breath there. You might do again that little lift and lift and you don't have to you could just be really still there uh, glute max glute max if you've never touched those places before with a ball don't work too hard right like you'll just let it do a little bit and then move on okay so that's our glute max now you can just circle all around the butt because it feels good and just get some hydration through that whole glute max now we're going to come to the side and do tfl now you could of course just stick with this soft ball. I'm gonna switch to the smaller ball. Um, I like to use a smaller ball, it's really more specific, and TFL is a small muscle. So on the, on the side, on the hip, we've done this TFL release before, drop that hip down, take that other leg over so you're rolling toward the belly a little bit. Ooh, and get right into that TFL. There it is, right toward the front of the pelvis. This hip is pulled a little bit forward. Uh, great. All right, gluteus maximus release, TFL release, releasing the two muscles that attach directly into the iliotibial band, which can contribute to some tensional imbalance through there and contribute perhaps to that more bursitis tendonitis kind of aggravation at the iliotibial band. So again, finding the sitting bone, we're gonna go right into the other side, sit right on the ball, sit right on the ball on the sitting bone, okay? And then circle around the sitting bone. Circle, circle. And notice, right, where does it feel tender? Is it on the inside, at the top, circling around? And then come right to the top of the sitting bone, the very, like you can go, from the sitting bone, rock forward and back, forward and back, just sliding your buttocks forward and back, bump up to the sitting bone. You'll feel as you bump up right up to that sitting bone, there's probably some tenderness there. So just sink there, maybe do a little lift. You don't have to do this at all. You could just sink there into that tissue. Okay, and then now we're gonna Release that, circle around. You can hold the points for a, up to a minute or a minute and a half. And then I want you to notice I, I kind of scoop my butt to the left and drop my knees a little bit to the right so I could get hooked to the inside of the sitting bone. And wag a little side to side so you're going between the sitting bone and the tailbone, the coccyx. Mm -hmm. And then just sink that ball right into that space in between the tailbone and the coccyx. And I'm gonna show you where that is. And here's my sitting bone and that ball is just on the inside. Back on there, a little wag, sink, explore, breathe, soften your eyes, soften your jaw as you're doing the work. You really have to be sitting up to get this area. All right, and then we can just circle all around the glutes because that 
feels good. Everybody likes to roll their butt all over the balls. And then now we're gonna go to the side to get that TFL. So you could just stay on the soft ball or you could switch to that small myofoam ball, whatever color it is, blue or green. Sink it into the side of the hip. That's our kind of glute min beginning, right? But we're gonna go further. We're gonna go into TFL. So we're gonna take that top leg over, drop it over, get that ball rolling toward the front of the hip a little bit. Sink the pelvis into the ball there, TFL. Releasing the two muscles that attach directly into the iliotibial band. Uh, one more breath. All right, moving off. Ah, uh, <laughs> great. So I recommend that you do some leg swings. So I'm gonna get up to stand and we're gonna do some leg swings because TFL is a hip flexor, glute max is a hip extensor. So we're gonna swing through that range of motion now. So to finish that release, we wanna do a little bit of leg swing. So you can place your hand on a wall and just sweeping the legs forward and back. TFL, glute max, TFL, glute max, TFL, glute max. We're just helping to hydrate the tissues and get them communicating well. Oh, other side. Okay, that's it. That's freeing TFL and glute max and balancing their pull on the iliotibial band.